All right, so this is gonna be a protein tutorial. Um, this video is new for my cousin who is an offensive lineman and I'm gonna be helping him get away from a snacking diet and moving more into a protein rich diet with essential amino acids. So to begin, it's important to look at essential amino acids versus non-essential. We're able to get a vast majority of non-essential in our own body that are produced. So um, looking at amino acids that are essential, this is leucine, isoleucine, histidine, lysine, methanine, phenylalanine, thyronine, tryptophan, and agonine. So these are not important to know at all, but just know that essential versus not essential. And we're able to get essential through complete protein foods that are high quality and provide all of these amino acids, like eggs, for example, or chicken or poultry products. And we're getting incomplete protein through um, freezer foods like dried beans, and they are going to lack in necessary amino acid group. So <clears throat> it's important to look at the um, pathway of proteins in the body. So to begin, we're able to me mechanically digest a little bit of the protein. And so proteins are these large folded things. And at this point, we're able to um, move this large folded protein into bolus. So our bolus is going to be mechanically ripped apart which helps in digestion and we're able to produce, move this bolus to the stomach then. So in the stomach, we have hydrochloric acid and this hydrochloric acid is gonna cleave the peptide bonds right away. And it's important to activate pepsin, pepsinogen into pepsin. So our pepsin is localized in our stomach. And if we are low on HCL, we don't have pepsin on board then, pepsin on board, sorry. <laughs> Um, pepsin is an active protease and it begins to clip the middle of our chains of these amino acids. So, um, we're able to start clipping from the middle of these amino acid chains, which makes them smaller, which helps for digestion. So, um, we're moving this chyme then into the small intestine, um, we're moving three milliliters at a time. And in the small intestine, our pancreatic juices are going to secrete zymogens into the duodenum. And these zymogens are trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, and procarboxypeptidase. These zymogens are inactive forms of pepti, um, protein enzymes, which are going to protect our pancreas. And if we're not able to protect our pancreas, we can end up seeing the pancreatitis. And then we have to change our pH around seven to eight, which is going to be necessary when we dump our zymogens into the small intestine with an acidic pH of four to five. If we're dumping it in to a pH of four to five is we're gonna have denatured enzymes. Um, and then we have to wake these zymogens up. So we have to, with a basic environment, we have to wake up our enterokinase enzyme, which is gonna clip the tail of the trypsinogen, which is highly active. And this allows for smaller branch chains. And this similar happens with our other zymogens where we're waking these up and um, waking them up and moving them into chymotrypsin. So these enzymes live in the wall of our duodenum. And then our amino acids can be able to travel in the bloodstream, the liver, where it's going to be used for protein synthesis and repair. And this is going to happen in processes called transamination. And um, so looking at transamination, this is the process where we're cycling amino acids into a new protein. So in the liver, we're going to start with two groups of enzymes. Um, transaminase enzymes and glutamate dehydrogenase. So starting with the healthy person, they are recycling about 90% of everything. And we start with an amino acid with a nitrogen group and the transaminase enzyme is going to be connected with B6 that will hold our figurative burger of iron nitrogen group. So B6 facilitates this removal and we have created a keto acid in this process. So keto acid um, as we create a keto acid, there's another keto acid called keto acid 2, which is waiting. And through vitamin B6, it's able to take our um, nitrogen, um, take our NH2 that was taken from keto acid 1 and put it on keto acid 2. So when we have created our amino acid 2, then um, we're able to use this. So the cycle is very important, and we should be doing this 98% of the time. So when we have a person that's metabolically, metabolically inflexible, um, we're going to be flipped into using a higher use of oxidative deamination in the mitochondria, where they're going to be neutralizing our NH3 to urea and keto acid um, to glucose. So if we are glucose dependent and 
we're going to be going through this cycle a lot more than just 2% of the time, and it's going to shift the balance of power. So if we're glucose dependent, our glutamine, glutamine molecule is able to handle nitrogens. So this is going to want to take our nitrogens and cycle them through. So our body is going to be in a position where we need to make glutamate. And when we do this, if we're exercising a lot, um, it's a lot easier on the body than if somebody's metabolically inflexible, they're going to be using this pathway a lot more. So our glutamine will break off the nitrogen groups into toxic ammonia. And because we don't have B6 in the situation, and we can often add hydrogen and create NH4 plus groups to go through the urea cycle. Um, but it's kind of hard. We don't want to be creating ammonia when this can end up going through the urea cycle with somebody that's metabolically inflexible. So NH4 can't go through the blood brain barrier and in the urea cycle, we'll make urea, which go through the kidney, which um, excretes it into urine for waste. So we're able to send our alpha ketoglutarate to become glucose also, which happens very quickly um, due to our carbon skeleton. And we can often see high VLDL levels, which show a fatty liver. So the main point to illustrate is we don't want to be utilizing this process more than we need to. We're going to be seeing higher levels of ammonia, which could show a higher BUN level of nitrogen in the blood. So it's a lot more energy um, favorable if we can use the processes that our, our body was designed for. And it starts with our diet. And if we're getting these amino acids that are essential into our diet, it's very important. So eating chicken and fresh vegetables, um, just to, like, I'm not saying that fresh vegetables are where we're getting our essential amino acids from in this situation, but just having a balanced diet with these proteins and amino acids incorporated in are very important. So that's about it. I would just recommend um, eating eggs. This is one of the best foods for incorporating all of the essential amino acids, and it is one of the best foods I recommend. So this is the beginning of what I would have to say on my protein tutorial.